today we are going to be tying a pickerel fly. Um, from my experience, this has been a pretty effective fly, so we'll get right into it. Um, first, pretty standard. I like to start out with a weed guard because uh, when you're fishing these flies, generally you're going to be in some pretty grass areas. You don't want to hit little pockets and what have you. So just start out with your standard streamer thread. I'm actually going a little light just because it might be a little lazy, but you'd want to go heavier than 70 denier, even though I'm not doing that right now. <laughs> but we'll go ahead and get this thread on here. Okay, got our base. Then we generally, you know, this came off this pretty cheap mono. If you can see the curve, see how it's curving this way, you'll want to make that curve follow the curvature of the hook because we're going to be doing uh, a weed guard where it kind of goes down the bend of the hook. So it'll be a lot easier if you kind of just attach it like that. Make it go down the hook bend. But after I put that on, I usually like to do a little dab of zappy gap. I like to build a more thread wraps on it. Kind of locks it all in really nice. Doesn't have to be real pretty. Pickerel aren't really that picky of a fish. I usually just, you know, I get this golden thread or golden flash here. Uh, I usually just pull out one strand. And they're pretty long, so. I just get this one strand and fold it in half. Fold it exactly in half. Then I cut it, cut the loop at the end, other end. And I do that again to both of those strands. Fold them directly in half again. Make sure the tips line up. Then I go ahead and tie it about midway. Not too, too worried about how it comes out. But kind of just tie it in that, have those strands going, and I fold this over. Capture that. And now I got some good flash. Next, what we want to do is we take uh, some rabbit zonker strips. Uh, take a strip of that, not too long. About the length of the shank of the hook. At least the skin, so about right there. That's gonna go on the end. So we'll just separate that out. Okay, so we got that cut, and we're actually going to tie this in with the rabbit hair facing up because this fly is gonna be riding hook point down. Kind of trailing off there. Capture it right there. Snug. Now with the dumbbell eyes. Get your dumbbell. Did you see that dumbbell? I chose red. I think it looks good. Make it about the dumbbell's length from the eye. See, that's where you'll want to put it. Should have got heavier thread for this. Because really good secret for dumbbell eyes is not using glue or epoxy, although I do use some Zappa Gap for extra security. It's not necessary, but it just makes me feel better. So I like to put that on there. But the tip for success on these being on nice and snugly and not spinning on you is really, really cranking down on your wraps. I mean, a lot of pressure. I really should have used a heavier thread for this, but now, after that, I like, this probably isn't too necessary, but I like to take some mallard flank, kind of go around the base here with it. So, I like to take the tip of a mallard flank, kind of split it like that. Tie that in over the top, kind of right behind the eyes, really. Oh. We'll do that again. Take another piece, flip it upside down, do the same thing, and kind of just like to make a big old mess of this. 
Uh, I ain't too worried about it looking too neat because I generally just glob all these feathers on there just to kind of fill it up and then the barring on the mallard flank is amazing so and then a lot of times I'll do two more feathers okay let me kind of just clean that up kind of make it go around nicely Okay, and last material, squirrel tail. I like to use red squirrel tail. It's beautiful, beautiful fur. And now we kind of just tie it like a reverse clouser minnow, really. Kind of just stacks it here on the, on the top, but since the dumbbells are upside down, it's kind of reversed, so get a little little bit don't need a whole lot that, that is pretty skinny but it does I like the sparse a little bit sparse and you want it to you want it just long enough to where you can barely see some of that mallard flank right here so this is where it gets a little ugly since it's kind of reversed kind of got a Flip it around and catch it on the other side of the dumbbell, like right there. And I'm not too worried about the underside. It's not perfect, but it will work. And do the top side. Top side, you get a lot more on the top. So we'll kind of separate out uh, about twice as much, really. And probably like that. The top. Go ahead and cut that and measure it up. So, one about right there, maybe. Like I said, kind of just barely to where you could see some of that mallard flank, and that looks good. So we will capture it top, and like the clouser pattern, the top you just tie it in above. The, uh, dumbbells. I'm clip that right there. Kind of mold it. Mold it around a little bit. Before we give it a nice snug wrap up. I like to do this pattern exactly the same. I like this pattern when it's a little bit uh, darker, dingier water. And then uh, on a little bit clear water, I like to have a white or cream zonker strip instead of the black. But, okay, now we are ready for the uh, weed guard. So I like to actually take this off so I can feed that weed guard through. Okay, now that's through and it's tightened. You can kind of see that good curvature here. You don't want it too tight. If it's too tight and they bite down, they won't be able to get through that tight mono. So you do want to kind of create a little bubble like that. See how it's bubbled up? You do kind of want to do that. So that's how we are going to do it. Kind of create a little bit of slack, push it in like that to create that nice little bubble with the mono. And we're going to capture it up top with a few wraps just so we can clip it. Like that. And wrap it up like so. Just like that. And do some whip finishes. I go overboard in my whip finishes sometimes, but I mean, you can never have too many, really. I do that, and since it really didn't spread all that well, I'll add a few more thread wraps in to 
spread that zappy gap around and now I will do my final whip finish Put one last little dab of zappy gap and there it's done that is my pickerel fly I hope you all enjoyed it um, don't forget about the giveaway coming up so um, y'all participate in that and hopefully you can be the lucky one to win so appreciate y'all and tight lines